Jesus said. The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. We meet this morning in the name of God, who is our Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. Welcome to our digital service of Holy Communion. My name is Debbie Pow, and I'm part of the clergy team at St Mary's Chalcombe and St Stephen's Lansdowne. And it's lovely to be able to welcome you once again into my home as we share this special service together. This is our digital service and whilst we are apart uh, physically, we are in one spirit together and we join with those who will also be physically part of our service, our physical services uh, this morning. And to that end, we'll be using the same liturgy uh, as will be used in the physical services of our church. Uh, the liturgy is available on St Stephen's website. Uh, look on the news page and go to a time of Corona and you'll find, scroll down and you'll find our liturgy there. Uh, this is a communion service and uh, you may like to, at the time we share the bread and the wine, you might like to have bread and wine with you to share in the meal. Of course, uh, you know, we believe that God is outside of space and of time and inside of space and time. And so he is there with us and that allows us to, have, to hold that uh, inclusion. But if you don't feel that that's right for you, uh, please just accept that I take communion on your behalf. So we take up our orders of service. And we pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is, like, is this, love your neighbour in the same manner that you love yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to be our advocate in heaven, to bring us to eternal life and to save us from all that leads us away from God's love, the things we call our sins. So in penitence and faith, we confess our sins now in a moment of quiet firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Just have that moment now to bring those things before God that you're not happy about. And we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. So Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, 
pardon and f deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And a prayer for today. God of the gathering storm, call us to announce the nearness of your rule. We praise you for the good news of Luke, for stories of searching love and grace found in the foreigner, of women of strength and rebellion, and men called from the margins. May we be bearers of that word to a world hungry for you, through Jesus Christ, who feasted with sinners. Amen. We have two readings this morning. And the first comes from the book of 2 Timothy, from chapter 4, and it begins at verse 5. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at bringing others to Christ. Complete the ministry God has given you. As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought a good fight. I finished the race and I have remained faithful. And now the prize awaits me. The crown of righteousness that the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the great day of his return. And the prize is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to this glorious, his glorious return. Please come as soon as you can. Demas has deserted me because he loves the things of this life and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus has gone to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Bring Mark with you when you come, for he will be helpful to me. I sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, be sure to bring the coat left with Carpus at Troas. Also bring my books, and especially my papers. Alexander the, scop the coppersmith has done me much harm. But the Lord will judge him for what he has done. Be careful of him. For he thought he fought against everything that we said. The first time I was brought before the judge, no one was with me. Everyone had abandoned me. I hope it will not be counted against them. But the Lord stood with me and gave me strength, that I might preach the good news in all faithfulness for all the Gentiles to hear. And he saved me from certain death. Yes. The Lord will deliver me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 10 beginning at verse 1. 
the Lord now chose 72 other disciples and he said, sent them on ahead in pairs to all the towns and villages he planned to visit. These were the instructions to them. The harvest is so great, but the workers are few. Pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest and asked him to send out more workers for his fields. Go now and remember that I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. Don't take along any money or a traveller's bag or even an extra pair of sandals and don't stop to greet anyone on the road. Wherever you enter a home, give it your blessing. If those who live there are worthy, the blessing will stand. If they're not, the blessing will return to you. When you enter a town, don't move around from home to home. Stay in one place, eating and drinking what they provide for you. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality, because those who work deserve their pay. If a town welcomes you, eat whatever is set before you and heal the sick, as you heal them, say, the kingdom of God is near you now. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I wonder if you are feeling sent out among wolves at this time of coronavirus. I wonder how you're coping with our current situation. It's easy to get caught up in the fear and the negative aspects of what's going on. But you know, in adversity, there is always something good that comes too. So I wonder, what that is for you. One of the good things that's come out uh, from our current situation, for our churches at least, uh, is morning prayer. Philip, Andrew, myself have been leading morning prayer over the last uh, few months. And when we go to, we're at PCC meetings or we're talking about how we move forward in our current situation, the question that always arises, what, do, what about morning prayer? Are you going to keep that going? It's not that everyone stops uh, at 8am and religiously sits down with their red books or their apps uh, and, uh, and joins in um, on that level. But it's somehow when this, our service goes out on, it goes out on Facebook and then later on YouTube, some pe people people are, are listening to that sometimes at 8 a.m. as it's going out live and sometimes uh, they come back to it later and it's sometimes it's going on in the background but whatever it is it seems that that morning prayer the the daily office as we we call it uh, somehow connects allows people to feel connected to God in a way that probably they hadn't felt previously and on a daily basis one of the lovely things about morning prayer and same for evening prayer is if you do it every day, uh, the, the readings that are given uh, follow on consecutively, so you follow through a whole book. And uh, through morning prayer the last few months, we've been following the book of Acts, which actually we just finished yesterday, which I'm really sad about because it's one of my favourite books uh, in the Bible. And it just happens that... Uh, Today, Luke, the Acts was written by uh, Luke, who also wrote a gospel. And it happens that today is Luke's, St. Luke's Day. And whilst we're not uh, celebrating it as a festival, uh, I have chosen those readings uh, from, for, for St. Luke's Day, simply because I thought it's quite nice to look at someone like Luke, um, and to see what he, he and his life have to say to us. 
one of the things that uh, stepping stones I suppose on my journey of faith was when uh, a vicar uh, at my local church talked about Paul and he talked about how difficult a character Paul was and it just struck me then that uh, somehow the saints, the, the apostles had, had seemed like uh, mythical characters almost. We see them in the stained glass windows with their halos and uh, looking rather uh, beatified, but they don't look human. And so that sermon was the first realisation that the Christian faith is built on the experience of real people. Uh, interacting with God and that was quite a revelation for me. So I wonder, I, I may be preaching to the converted but I wonder what you know of Luke. Who was he? Uh, we know he, he wrote the book of Acts which is more correctly termed the book of the Acts of the, the Apostles and it chronicles the life of the early church. He's also the author of Luke's Gospel, which also chronicles the life of Jesus right from birth through to his death. There are themes of birth and growth in both those books. But who was he? Why take notice of what was written by this person so long ago? I could paint uh, a beautifully detailed picture of the man Luke, if I could paint. But the truth is we actually don't know an awful lot about him. We do know uh, a few things though. We know that he was well educated. The way he writes in Greek is much more sophisticated than the way that the other uh, gospel writers wrote. He had a good command of the Greek language and its little idiosyncrasies. We also know that he was a doctor. He was a medical man. If you, if you know a, a doctor, you'll know that they have, uh, generally have an incredible eye for detail. They'll see the things that most of us miss in people and often in situations. We know he was a historian too and the way that he dated many of the events that he wrote about uh, have been verifiable. In fact, historians today um, often uh, know that Luke is fairly accurate uh, in his dating of things. Luke, being uh, a doctor, uh, writes uh, in, a, in a very... Uh, quite a, a scientific sort of, of, of way in, in uh, cause and effect. Um, I have to say it's my favourite gospel coming from a, a slightly sciencey background. Uh, and my, my thinking is quite linear. Uh, if you are someone who's very artistic and has you know, lots of lovely uh, ideas and connects things from all over the place, you may prefer someone like John's gospel. Uh, each gospel has a different character. It's written for a a different audience and although their messages are essentially the same they have different nuances uh, so Luke's gospel is some is the gospel that I find for me resonates the best um, and it's some of those little uh, things in the gospels that Luke really notices that blow his mind being being a medical man being someone who's been concerned all his life with healing uh, and it's it's interesting to note that it's the it's the healing miracles that really uh, fire Luke up and he knows what it's like to try to heal someone and there's Jesus comes along and these people are healed because of his presence always in a different way and so he, the, Luke's gospel is the gospel that records the most healings He also portrays Jesus in a very human way. Focus, he, he 
he explores his divinity but his focus is on the the human aspects of Jesus and his sacrifice that he makes for us all his interaction with the Holy Spirit both as a person and then in the book of Acts the way that the Holy Spirit uh, falls upon the early church and the believers and the, the work of the Holy Spirit is so significant in all of Luke's writings. He also prays, uh, portrays Jesus as being someone who, port who prays. Whenever there's a big event in Jesus' life, it's always preceded by prayer in Luke's Gospel. A great uh, indicator for us of uh, how we also need to come to God in prayer. In our churches, we have a lot to be thankful to Luke for. Luke, uh, we don't know an awful lot about his background. We know he wasn't Jewish, uh, though he may have been a, a convert to Judaism. He was almost certainly Gentile, possibly Greek. And so when he's writing, he doesn't have uh, the same Jewish patriarchal view and women and Jesus' interaction with women, the way that uh, Jesus uh, embraces them, encourages them, teaches them, uh, entrusts himself with them, uh, is very characteristic of Luke's writing, the way he, Jesus empowers women. And it's because of Luke's writing that uh, I am able to be here. His work is also very inclusive. He, he sees the way that God works as being very uh, inclusive of those outside of the core. And it's things like that that have shaped our theology and our understanding of God in our churches. Luke particularly focuses on the way that the Holy Spirit uh, and Jesus actually interacted or interacts with, with people who weren't uh, expected to be part of the religious centre, who were thought to be outside of God's love. So what about the man, Luke? He's often known as Luke the Evangelist. But actually when you read his writings, we never get the impression that he is out there uh, leading great evangelical meetings or uh, preaching in quite the same way that, say, Paul or Timothy uh, or, or Silas or Barnabas were. And yet his writings explain the good news of Jesus to, for all, just in the way that he tells the story. And it's interesting as you read the book of Acts that he starts off narrating the story of what has happened and then Halfway through, I, during Paul's second missionary uh, journey, the narrative suddenly changes from they to we. We boarded the boat to Troas. Luke was a, an eyewitness uh, to much of the book of Acts. He was a companion to Paul. We know that he accompanied the imprisoned Paul uh, that he sailed uh, in those terrible storms uh, from, from the Holy Land through to Rome and was shipwrecked at Malta on the way. Luke was there. As we heard in the uh, first reading, when all her else had deserted Paul, Luke was there with him. He was an incredibly loyal person get that feeling that he wasn't the extrovert character but he was a quiet gentle supporting sort of man probably too knowing little of Paul's a uh, difficult character he was probably incredibly patient and without Luke's support it's, it's unlikely that Paul would have been so widely known he would have been able to work in, um, and be recorded in quite the way that he has. So often when we think, when we 
reflect on being called out into Jesus' harvest field as he called his work, as we think we have to be Paul-type characters. In Luke, we see that just the way that we can be ourselves, the way that we can support others, the way that we can share our story, simply share our story, can be as much a part of God's kingdom and God's the expanding of God's kingdom as the mo more overtly uh, evangelical. Luke shows us a faith that's in three dimensions, an upward faith that worships God, that's prayerful, a faith that's inward, that's transforming, that's healing, whether that's physically or emotionally or spiritually. And as a result of those things, it's a faith that is outward looking, looking to serve uh, others, looking to share the love of God uh, in the world around us. Luke is a wonderful character to be able to reflect on for ourselves and to uh, inspire us just to be ourselves and allow God to use us as we are. Amen. Let's declare our faith in God in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. And on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, the response is, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. O oh God, the creator and preserver of all, we pray for people in every kind of need. Make your ways known on earth, your saving health among all nations, especially at this time. Help nations to work together. Help companies, churches, faith groups, as we work together at this time. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church. Guide and govern us by your good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Pray especially at this time for our Archbishops, Justin and Stephen. Pray for our Bishops, for Bishop Peter at this time as he undergoes treatment for leukaemia. 
Bishop Ruth as she holds the reins. And other retired bishops who are supporting. Pray for our archdeacons, Archdeacon Adrian, and for our uh, area and rural deans. Pray for our clergy and for all who serve the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to our, your fatherly give goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind or body or spirit. Comfort and relieve them in their need. Give them patience in their sufferings and bring good out of their afflictions. Lord, we pray for those in our churches in need of prayer. Holding before you, Jean, Paul and Rhys, Rebecca, Hilary, Amanda, Bill and Martin, and Oscar. And pray for our young people at university in their first year at this time. Praying for Thomas, Stephen, Charlotte and Annie. And just take a moment to bring before you your mind those you know in need of prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember those who've gone before us in the peace of Christ. And we give you praise for all your faithful ones, with whom we rejoice in the communion of saints. Praying for those who grieve and mourn. Remembering particularly the family of Pauline Skinner, for David and Teresa. the family of Graham Loveday who died this week, for Pauline, Johnny and Benji, and for the family of Tony and Lynn Eads, whose funeral will be this afternoon, praying for Mike and all the family. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, dear friends, peace to you from God, our Creator. Peace from Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. Look upon us in mercy, not in judgment. Draw us from hatred to love. Pour upon the poverty of our love and the weakness of our praise, the transforming fire of your presence. Friends, the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, 
to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name. Forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for to us his body and his blood, who, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Holy Spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in heaven and earth, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. So being made one in communion with God, let us pray with confidence as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread.
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died and now lives for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, the source of, source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and those you love and those with no one to love, now and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>